Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss what all we are going to cover as part of the first module of microeconomics, which is introductory microeconomics, or it is also known as principles of microeconomics in few universities. Now, <clears throat> the principles of microeconomics or introductory microeconomics is going to have six modules. The first module is going to talk about what is economics? What is the scope of economics? What is scarcity? This is very important. The questions as to what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce, how to distribute the output. All that we are going to cover as the part of the first part of this module. Now, for a lot of you, because economics is going to be altogether a very new subject, we are going to actually start this chapter by understanding how graphs work in economics. You know, I will be talked. So, for example, you know, if I, I go ahead and make a graph like this and I call this PPF, then what does this mean? What does a point on PPF mean? What does a point inside PPF mean? Because, you know, economics is all about maths and graphs. So this is really starting with the reading and working of graphs. To explain in terms of chapters, I'm going to cover chapter one and two. The primary book that I'm going to follow throughout for introductory microeconomics is going to be ManQ. Forever, like if I go through any of these modules, it is going to be through ManQ. This is the most basic book for economics and a wonderful, easy written book easy explained book, easy to grasp book. So you is, we are going to follow this and this is what I recommend you to follow. Now let's go ahead with the next module. The next module is going to talk about supply and demand. We're going to understand what is supply, what is demand, how does demand and supply meet, how is equilibrium attained in the market, what happens when equilibrium is not attained in the market, which means what happens when it, there is a price ceiling or price floor? What is consumer surplus? What is producer surplus? What is total surplus? What happens when surplus is not attained? What is the role of taxation? How does taxation lead to deadweight loss? What is deadweight loss for that matter? And you know what? this deadweight loss is going to stick with you throughout. When you do intermediate microeconomics, when you do public economics, when you do environmental economics, deadweight loss is here to stay. So, you know, this is important concepts that we are going to study. How does elasticity and demand in demand and supply determine who is going to pay how much taxes? What is the role of elasticity? For that matter, what is elasticity? What is market demand? What is market supply? What is welfare? How do we determine welfare? Who controls the prices? What happens when equilibrium price is not there in the economy? This is going to be covered through ManQ, chapter four, five, six, seven, and eight. The next module is going to be about the households. Having understood the market, and having understood the demand and supply sides of the market, we want to focus specifically on the households. Now, this is going to be literally an overview. And it, it is going to come again in intermediate. Because I'm doing introductory, it's going to come again in intermediate microeconomics. But not only that, it is also going to come back to you in advanced microeconomics. And you will be amazed by the kind of applications we are going to do as we go from introductory to advanced microeconomics. How the you know basic indifference curve, the well-defined indifference curve that I'm going to define here, are going to change. What is going to happen those do, to those indifference curve mathematically as we progress towards intermediate microeconomics? And what is going to happen to those same 
you know indifference curve as we go towards advanced microeconomics and we introduce different kinds of indifference curves and we introduce different concepts of max function min function etc so you know this chapter here which is theory of consumer choice is going to talk about what is indifference curve it is going to talk about the properties of indifference curve it is going to talk about income effect substitution effect very very important you know later on i will introduce this back here in intermediate microeconomics but there i will introduce the three kinds of income and substitution effect what happens if it's a normal good what happens if it's a given good what happens if it is actually a infer an inferior good so anyhow so we are going to talk about income and substitution effect we are going to talk about labor supply curve and we are going to see what happens and how labor supply curve is actually backward bending what happens to income and substitution effect what leads to this backward bending labor supply curve we are going to talk about the savings decision again which is an application of the income and substitution effect now this is the most important chapter for you to form the basics of the advanced and intermediate level of microeconomics so this chapter holds at most importance in this subject let's go ahead the next module is going to talk about the firms and the perfect market structure so i want to alert you a bit here the market structure is actually going to talk about various kinds of market i can either have a perfectly competitive market or i can have an imperfect market which is i can have a monopoly i can have oligopoly i can have duopoly then there is something which is known as monopolistic etc anyways this part which is this module is only going to talk about perfect competition solely about perfect competition we have to try and understand three main things whenever we talk about firm one production function actually four but the fourth is derived from these production function then once i know that this is what i'm going to produce i want to understand how many how much revenue i generate i want to understand how much cost i incurred and finally i want to understand what is revenue minus cost or profit so i want to understand what is production function i want to understand what is revenue function what is average revenue what is marginal revenue what is total revenue what is average cost what is marginal cost what is total cost within total cost what are fixed costs what are variable costs and finally what is profit so this entire module is going to talk about the behavior of profit maximizing firm remember in the perfect market structure it is going to talk about short run cost it is going to talk about output decisions how much output should be produced it is going to talk about the output and cost in the long run when we do not have fixed cost no variable is fixed so this is being covered through manq chapter 13 and 14 the next module is going to talk about the imperfect market structure in the imperfect market structure we are going to specifically focus on monopoly this is going to be a basic chapter on monopoly not an advanced version of monopoly which is something that we will revisit in the intermediate microeconomics but this is where we are setting the base for that so i want to understand what are the price discriminations that a monopolist can do but for that i want to understand what is monopoly for that matter i want to understand how it differs from perfectly competitive market what is the difference between the two so that base is being set in this chapter in the imperfect market structure in imperfect market structure we are going to talk about chapter 15 from manq 
Finally, the last module is going to talk about the input markets. Now, why is input market important in the first place? Because I also want to understand how am I attaining optima for those input markets. Labor and capital are my basic or main inputs. So I want to understand how do we want to set equilibrium for them. Like I want to really understand how much output is my labor producing and how much wage is my labor getting. Is he getting a wage dependent on the output that he's, he's producing? Are we getting rent dependent on the marginal product of capital that we have, etc. So, you know, we want to understand the basic concept. First of all, obviously, the input demand is a derived demand because we are deriving it from the demand of the output. How much, how much output I sell is going to determine how much inputs I want. So the demand of input is a derived demand. So we want to understand the concept of derived demand. We want to understand the productivity of inputs, the marginal productivity of labor. We want to understand what happens when I multiply price by marginal productivity of labor. I want to understand what is marginal revenue product. We want to understand how much demand will we do. We want to understand what are the demand curves? How do the demand curves shift? How is the labor market determined? Do we have a demand curve and supply curve in the labor market, which determines the wage and the amount of labor that is being used in the labor market? We want to understand all of that. So this chapter is more related to the labor market. And this is going to be covered as part of chapter 18 of MANQ. This is going to be the syllabus that we are going to cover as part of the first subject of microeconomics, which is introductory microeconomics or principles of microeconomics.